my good friend and inventor of the Ethernet, Bob Metcalf, used to run around saying, the internet is going to have a gigalapse, uh, you know, a collapse <laughs> at, uh, at gigabit speeds. And it didn't happen, uh, and I think he predicted this 10 years ago in 1997, and he very uh, uh, honorably uh, took the editorial he wrote, mixed it up in a blender, and ate it. <laughs> <laughs> This, this was after verifying that the ink would not do any damage to his body. So uh, I think that this is, this is an understandable worry that people have. You know, they see huge amounts of information flowing back and forth in the net. But let me remind you of something I mentioned during my talk. We are far from exhausting the capacity of a single fiber. You could put as many as 160 colors on a single fiber, driving them at anywhere from 10 to 40 gigabits per second. So a single fiber could carry up to 6.4 terabits per second with today's technology. Of course, the more, there is this other uh, law that says that the more capacity you put on a single fiber, the higher the probability a backhoe will find it and cut it. Uh, this, there, this is a fifth force of, of nature, you know, in addition to gravity and uh, all the other things. Uh, setting that aside, though, we are far from exhausting the core capacity of the network. Um, the other thing, though, that is more important and relevant to your question is the access speeds that we are able to provide. The technologies are there to provide very, very substantial access speeds up in the gigabit range. The ability to supply optical fiber to a termination at a residence uh, is uh, less common. In fact, in countries where people live in high-rise apartments, it's more often the case that you see fiber terminations at the apartment building and then the ability to feed high speed to everyone in that apartment building. If you're living in single-family dwellings, it's more difficult because you need a different cable run or a different fiber run for each one of them. So that's a slower process. And if there's a place where, where things are likely to be troublesome, it might be there. But once again, I want to remind you about that arithmetic that we did earlier about the high speed and low speed and, and delivery of video. If the bulk of the video that you watch is pre-recorded material, you don't have to obtain it at video speeds. You can obtain it at lower than video speeds if necessary. It takes longer, no argument there. But 85% of all the video that people watch is pre-recorded material. So you just set the system running, downloading it at whatever speed the network will allow. You don't have to worry that every packet shows up exactly in the right order. You don't have to worry that they show up precisely at the right time because you're not watching it while it's being downloaded, just like you're not listening to the music on iPod while it's being downloaded. So there are ways of coping with the fact that not all the video has to be presented in real time, as long as you have enough memory to store it and play it back which frankly is how I believe more and more people will choose to uh, make use of video entertainment, that they will download and play it back. Uh, I can't help but observing that uh, uh, our friends at Netflix have found another alternative way of delivering video. It's called the Postal Service. <laughs> and I asked the fellow, uh, what's his name, Reed, I think, um, how, the CEO, how many DVDs are you delivering every day? You know, so this question I asked a year ago, and at that time it was 1.9 million DVDs per day. If you do the arithmetic, that's actually a significant data rate coming out of the Netflix operation per second. So uh, <laughs> it's just that there's a little delay called two days or something you know, before <laughs> the videos show up. So the answer is I don't think we're going to ha have a collapse of the network. 